the uppercut. Lewis responding with a couple of fast jabs. That uppercut inside, though, from Smelling was a, a quality punch. Oh, and there's another tremendous right hand and the left hook, and Lewis looks in trouble. Lewis is in trouble on the ropes. He's got to hold on and got to buy time, and it doesn't help him one shot that the referee splits in there. Another right over the top from Smelling. Oh, and these are anxious moments for Joe Lewis Barrow. Terrific shot again from Smelling, and he's hitting Lewis almost at will now with that right hand. And the uppercut. And Lewis looks like a man about to fall. Oh, and down he goes. The right hand has been the danger punch throughout. And Lewis surely can't get up from that. The fight's all over. It's one of the great upsets. And the huge underdog from Germany, Max Schmeling, is declared the winner. And scenes of pandemonium in New York. Max Schmeling, with one of the greatest wins of his professional career, stops Joe Lewis in 12 at the Yankee Stadium in New York. Another solid right hand. Lewis tentatively threw the left jab. And as he did so, Schmeling was there with the counter. That's a good body shot. Crowd uh, suspecting it was low. Lewis getting a word from the referee, but nothing too serious. Lewis trying to tee Schmelling off with uppercuts, hooks to the body. Solid right hand once more from Schmelling. And the uppercut. Lewis responding with a couple of fast jabs. That uppercut inside, though, from Smelling was a, a quality punch. Oh, and there's another tremendous right hand and the left hook, and Lewis looks in trouble. Lewis is in trouble on the ropes. He's got to hold on and got to buy time, and it doesn't help in one shot that the referee splits in there. Another right over the top from Smelling. Oh, and these are anxious moments for Joe Lewis Barrow. Terrific shot again from Schmelling, and he's hitting Lewis almost at will now with that right hand. And the uppercut. And Lewis looks like a man about to fall. Oh, and down he goes. The right hand has been the danger punch throughout, and Lewis surely can't get up from that. The fight's all over, it's one of the great upsets, and the huge underdog from Germany, Max Schmeling, is declared the winner, and scenes of pandemonium in New York. What's going on, family? Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. We just witnessed Joe Lewis and Max Schmeling the first fight, and first I showed you the audio, so you can hear how it sounded to the onlookers at home on the radio. Then we took a look at the fight. Clearly, Joe Lewis was not prepared for the fight. That is his fault. But that's what the situation was. You're looking at Lou Salica. He went back and forth with Cisco Escobar. We covered that championship fight. And Lou Salica, they called him the Corny Island Brooklyn boy. Very good fighter. It was in the 1932 Olympic Games, Lou Selica. Wanted to show you Baltazar sang Chile. He would take the Bantamweight Championship belt from Panama Al Brown. That's Baltazar sang Chile. June 29th, 1936. Tony Marino comes back after being dropped and badly hurt in the first round. He rings punches. 
on Balthazar Sanchili. For he would knock him out in the 14th round. And he knocked him out cold. Tony Marino was born May 18, 1912 in Pennsylvania. He died February 1st, 1937 in New York. He stood five foot three inches. He weighed 110 to 125 pounds. And he was trained by Ray Arcel. He was a bantamweight. And he would become a world champion. He faced fighters such as Lou Salica and Baltazar Sanchili, Midget Wargas, and Sisto Escobar. We didn't even face Panama Al Gans or Panama Al Brown. He would face Panama Al Brown and Victor Young Perez. Pretty good fighter was Tony Marino. Now as for Baltazar Sanchili, he was born October 15th, 1911 in Spain. He died 1992, weighed 117 to 122 pounds. He would win the EBU and the IUB, Bantamweight Championship belt. He would win the Bantam Championship belt of Spain and of Europe. Very good fighter was Baltazar Sanchili. July 11th, 1936, Freddie Steele defeats Eddie Bay Visco, 15 rounds, in Seattle, Washington. He would win the NBA New York recognition as middleweight champion. Now, Freddie Steele, his name was Frederick Earl Steele. He was born December 18th, 1912 in Seattle, Tacoma, Washington. He died August 23rd, 1984. He stood 5 foot 10 inches. He was a middleweight champion. He weighed 127 to 161 and a quarter pounds. He'd be in the ring with Eddie Bay Visco, Ken Overland, Vince Dundee, and Al Hastak. Be introduced to the Boxing Hall of Fame in 1989, International Boxing Hall of Fame in 1999. Lost also fight fighters such as Gus Lesnovich and Seferino Garcia. Freddie Steele is to your left. Eddie B. Visco is to your right. Steele would become middleweight champion of the world on the night of July 11th, 1936. July 22nd, 1936. Peter Cerrone would take on Baby Manuel. 15 rounds. Dallas, Texas to remain featherweight champion of the world. Now Cerrone became the champion when he defeated Freddie Miller. May 2nd, 1936. He lost the title in the third round. It was his third title defense against Henry Armstrong. New York's Madison Square Garden, October 29, 1937. He'd be stopped in six rounds with Henry Armstrong, and he would lay in somewhat of a sitting position, thinking about all the memories that he would have during the course of his career. He would think about the time when he fought Fidel La Barba in the Olympic Games. And his last fight would be against Sammy Ingott. But Peter Cerrone, dynamite little fighter. Referee was Bernie Beckers. He awards Cerrone the victory in anonymous 15 rounds at the Sport Auditorium. Now, Peter Cerrone was 29 years old. He stood five foot three inches. He was a featherweight and had a 63-inch reach. Won over 100 fights and had 19 losses. 
12 draws and 19 knockouts. The baby Manuel was 24 years old. He stood 5 foot 5 inches. He was a southpaw. He was a featherweight. Had 68 victories, 26 losses, 21 draws, and 29 knockouts. August 4th, 1936, Homicide Hank. Henry Armstrong defeats Baby Ares Menzi. 15 rounds, Los Angeles, California. It was for the Mexican and the California recognition of the World Featherweight Championship belt. And Baby Ares Menzi became a professional when he was 13 years old. Baby Ares Menzi was some fighter. These men would be in the ring with one another six times. There were split victories. They would fight all the way up to 1939. Baby Ares Menzi was a bantamweight champion in Mexico. And he would fight as far up as well to wait, 1939. And he was challenged for the welterweight championship belt against Henry Armstrong. August 18th, 1936, Joe Lewis knocks out Jack Sharkey. The referee was Arthur Donovan. He knocked him out in three rounds in New York's Yankee Stadium. And Arthur Donovan was stopped to slaughter one minute and two seconds into the third round. 29,300 spectators had favored Lewis 7-1 to one to defeat Jack Sharkey, formerly the Boston Garb, as they collectively invested $150,000. And they were very curious to witness any damaged goods that may have resulted in a 12-round beating, 73 punches that landed on the head of Joe Lewis for Max Smelling. June 19th, 1936, Joe Lewis would witness one of the baddest beatings, I should say, that he's ever taken in his career. Lewis weighed 200 pounds, he had 24 wins and one loss for 20 knockouts. Sharkey weighed 197 pounds. He had 38 wins, 13 losses, and 13 knockouts. So that's all for this video. I'm Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fist of Gulf Series. All great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. Let's continue to examine 100 years of world championship fights when we get to the 1937.